Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. In the past, babies were not automatically subject to enslavement within the societies they were born into. Individuals were responsible for their own food and shelter, and no one claimed ownership over the land. However, some people with criminal intent banded together and established control over a particular area through force. This led to the emergence of the concept of fiefdoms and serfs, with feudal lords claiming ownership over the land and demanding a portion of the population's labor. This created a system of enslavement, with individuals being hunted down if they attempted to escape to free lands. Feudal lords also developed self-serving religions and beliefs to support their fiefdoms. Nowadays, children are born into a system that often burdens them with debt, taxes, and financial obligations, making them feel like financial slaves with no way out. Even though rulers often claim to promote freedom, they can be deceptive and manipulative, while banking dynasties have seized our inherent birthrights. In a fiefdom, money changers were appointed to encourage production, transactions, and the collection of taxes and tithes. The actual production of goods and services within a community generates wealth. However, bartering the multitude of goods can be difficult and time-consuming, making an agreed-upon exchange mechanism necessary to facilitate trade and encourage investment and production. Tokens, or money, were often used for this purpose, with internal agreements needed for trade within the fiefdom and external agreements needed for trade across fiefdoms. The issuers of these tokens, such as the money changers, held significant power and decided how to distribute wealth, often keeping the largest share for themselves. Since the times of the Babylonian Nimrod and Prophet Abraham 4,000 years ago, the times of ancient Rome and Greece, the times of the pharaohs and other dynasties, the self-anointed illuminated ones, wealthy nobles, rulers and controllers, have been devising and evolving systems to enslave the peasants mentally and physically, for their own financial benefits and comforts. All the prophets of God and other men of conscience have exposed them and their usury slavery systems. Thus, these Illuminatees have a special aversion to the Torah, the Bible and the Quran. Although God's prophets were often the only ones speaking out against tyranny, let's keep in mind the following quote from Mahatma Gandhi, if only one person knows the truth, it is still the truth. Despite the advancements in technology that have freed people from the laborious tasks of hunting and farming for sustenance, the benefits of this progress have not been equally shared. The wealth created by these innovations should have raised the living standards for everyone, but instead, it has been concentrated in the hands of the banking dynasties, who act as modern-day feudal lords. They have maintained a system of financial enslavement, where they take a significant portion of people's labor and productivity gains for their own benefit. With the use of technology, they have refined their control over the financial system and eliminated the possibility of finding free lands to escape to. This has led to a worldwide system of enslavement, and the banking dynasties are working towards a centralized communist-style new world order, which threatens to exacerbate this problem. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. The bank lords have a great love for money, as they hold a monopoly on its creation, a fact that will be elaborated on later. Their vast wealth allows them to purchase nearly anything, while their ability to generate interest without physical labor provides them with even more financial gains. 
Additionally, their immense wealth affords them significant power and prestige over the lives of others. An illustration of their power is the ease with which they can create vast sums of money, as evidenced by the fact that typing two extra zeros can transform $9 billion into $900 billion. Earth's natural resources such as land, minerals, air and water should ideally be shared equally among all inhabitants of the world. Additional wealth is created through productive work that adds value to something, generating income and wealth for individuals and society. The distribution of wealth is a separate issue, as it often trickles upwards to the ruling elites. Wealth can be stored if it is in a non-perishable and in-demand form such as gold, but storage and carrying costs may apply, and its value can change over time. Produce and buildings have associated costs, while oil stored in the ground has no storage cost, but has extraction costs. Your ability to perform labor is another type of stored wealth. However, the value of national fiat currency, which is another form of stored wealth, changes due to various factors. Despite having zero storage cost, the Federal Reserve dollar note has lost 98% of its value since 1913. The value of money today is not solely determined by private banking corporations, but by the collective contribution of skilled individuals, resources, and infrastructure, working within a supportive social and legal framework in a specific geographic location. Money serves as the essential lubricant that allows society to function by facilitating trade, although it is not tangible wealth, but rather a power to obtain wealth, or a claim to it. Money is an abstract social power based on law, and is determined by the government that accepts it as payment of taxes. Wealth destruction often occurs through wars and crises, orchestrated by elite banking dynasties and their associates in the military-industrial-political complex. In the case of paper money being burnt or lost at sea, no actual wealth is destroyed, but the economy loses liquidity, and the potential transfer or production of goods and services is affected. How is wealth transferred? Through taxes, inflation, bailout transactions, theft and fraud. What do you think? Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.